Welcome back everybody, I'm Robert Ridpath. And in this video series, we've been looking at sugar and why and how it has such a negative impact on our system. Then we've looked at insulin and insulin's effect on our system. But in this video, we're taking it one step farther and we're gonna look at why Alzheimer's disease is now being called type three diabetes. Remember, type one is a genetic issue. You can't uh, make insulin, so that happens in children. Uh, then there's type two or adult onset, but they had to drop the term adult because it was more children getting this than adults. And also that's diet and lifestyle in impacted and influenced. And so now we're gonna look at Alzheimer's and why they're calling it type three diabetes. So this impacts you in so many ways from your aging parents to your own healthy aging to the aging and accelerated aging or cognitive decline in our children. So this loss of brain function and cognition impacts all those around us. Now what's really interesting is I read this study where they looked at people over the age of 65 and they said, hey folks, what are you afraid of as you're going down this road of life and getting older? I would have thought, you know, it's getting older and dying. No, I was wrong. What they concluded was that these people over 65, their biggest fear was losing their cognition, getting Alzheimer's, losing their marbles, and then being a burden on the family. So people are afraid of this. This is impacting so many people in our culture because in Canada, it's 2016, uh, in 10 years, they say 40% of the population will be over the age of 50. And that's where this cognition thing really starts to kick in and create havoc. So let's take a look at what we've got and how this really unfolds. So we've talked about elevated blood sugar and its imp impact on insulin. And then we looked at the imbalances of blood sugar. And one thing we really kind of keyed on was when you eat all this carbohydrate, this sugar, it impacts and causes the release of insulin or what we call hyperinsulinemia. So high levels of insulin in your blood. And then we looked at how all this high insulin is promoting declining health. Everything from promoting sodium retention to elevated cholesterol, promotes fat storage in the body, body. Um, it promotes cancers, it promotes hormone imbalances, and ultimately when you can't control your blood sugar, you have low energy. So that was in the previous videos, and you can go back and watch those. But in this video, let's take a look and a deeper dive at why and how insulin promotes neurological decline. So here we have blood sugar and insulin dysfunction or dysregulation. So you can't control your blood sugar right, you can't control insulin right, your levels are much higher. And so what this does, it impacts your cognition, your memory, dementia, Alzheimer's disease, and something called cerebral dysfunction where the whole brain just doesn't work right. Now, how is it that insulin promotes neurological decline? Well, with the elevated insulin, as we saw, the insulin actually turns on enzymes and increases cholesterol biosynthesis. So high insulin increases cholesterol biosynthesis. It's really not the um, fats in your diets per se, it's the high sugar. Now that cholesterol blocks blood vessels and creates something called vascular inflammation. So the blood vessels, the in, inside of them, if you will, becomes kind of inflamed and the plaque starts building up, the cholesterol starts building up, you have reduced uh, circulation and you have reduced cerebral blood flow. So you have less blood flow to the brain. That means you have less nutrients, less oxygen, and ultimately less waste removal. And guess what? When you add that up, the neuronal cells, the brain cells start to die. Another way that we saw that elevated insulin promotes neurological decline is that we saw that it promotes fat storage. Well, why is this important? Well, when you store fat, um, fat promotes inflammation in the body. Your fat doesn't just sit there and jiggle when you wave goodbye or walk. Your fat produces um, compounds, they're called cytokines. These are signaling molecules in your body. It produces at least 25 that we know of right now. And more, more than half of those promotes inflammation in the body. So what I'm saying is increased body fat increases 
inflammation in the body and increased free radicals and more oxidative stress. And ultimately, that puts a burden on the sensitive brain tissue, the neuronal tissue, and you get neuronal death. Another mechanism how insulin promotes neurological decline is by something called glycosylated proteins. So what is this? When you can't control your blood sugar, blood sugar levels start uh, rising. So your fasting glucose and your daily glucose levels are high. And your red blood cells and your other proteins run into these glucose molecules. And the glucose molecule sticks. It sticks to the protein or to the red blood cell. And we call these glycosylated. Basically, that means there's a glucose bound to them. And there's a measurement that you can get through your doctor's hemoglobin A1C. And there are other markers as well. And what this does is your immune system now looks at your red blood cell and looks at these other immune proteins and it says, well, you look different. You've got this you know, extra head, if you will, this glucose molecule. I have to attack you. And we call all of these glucose-related or glycosylated proteins advanced glycosylated end products, or AGEs for short. So we age. And this creates immune activation. And when your immune system gets activated, it sends uh, signaling molecules throughout the body, and some of those molecules go into your brain. Now, what's really interesting is, in the human brain, about 15%, um, maybe a little bit more, a little bit less, depending on what you read, of the matter in the brain are immune cells. They're called micro glial cells. They're the glue cells that hold the neurons and everything else together. These are actually immune cells. So when you get immune activation, and remember, we're just talking about glycosylated proteins here, but you could get immune activation from periodontal disease and infections in your gum. You could get um, immune activation from if you have this uh, disharmony, this dysbiosis, these gut problems. So these are some of the nutrient ways that you can get immune activation. And ultimately, microglial activation in the brain, it creates free radicals and it kills its neighbor. But in this case, the neighbor just happens to be a neuron. So what happens? Neuronal death. Another mechanism is that when you can't control your blood sugar, it spills over. Um, well, let me go back. Usually when your blood sugar goes up, we release insulin. And insulin uh, allows glucose, the sugar, to go into cells like your muscle tissue, into your liver, and so on, be stored. But there are certain tissues that don't require insulin for its uptake. So if blood sugar gets high, it will spill over into your kidney. It will spill over into your eye. And it will spill over, if you will, into your nervous system, your central nervous system, and into your brain. And this creates inflammation in the brain. And ultimately, that promotes cell death and neuronal decline. And then what happens, and another case is, relating to this, is when people don't sleep right. Often when you can't control your blood sugar, some people gain weight, they develop sleep problems, and specifically in this case, we're looking at sleep apnea. And what happens is you basically stop breathing. And you don't get into deep sleep because you stop breathing, uh, and then you maybe cough or snore, you wake up, and so you're never getting into deep sleep. When your brain goes into deep sleep, that's when you release growth hormone. And that's a very key hormone for allowing the body to rebuild from the daily stresses. However, what also happens when you don't sleep right, in your brain, uh, proteins build up, beta amyloid and other proteins. And at nighttime, your brain flushes these out. And the analogy I use, because I like cars, is a radiator flush. Over time, stuff builds up in the system. You drain all the fluid from the radiator. You put new fluid in, and you're good to go. Same sort of idea here. At nighttime, in deep sleep, your brain flushes out a lot of these proteins and these waste products and so on. So what happens is, if you can't sleep right, you don't get your brain flush, these proteins, and other components start building up, that creates inflammation in the brain, and you get a buildup of beta amyloid, and ultimately, neuronal cell death. So you can see where this is going. Another component we looked at is that elevated insulin causes the body to retain sodium. 
when the body retains sodium, this drives up blood pressure and uh, contributes to uh, the blood vessels constricting. Again, this reduces cerebral blood flow and ultimately neuronal cell death. So you can see all these mechanisms building up. But there's another piece of the puzzle that's quite interesting. I learned about this in 2004. When your body has elevated insulin, um, in the brain, there is a enzyme that breaks down beta amyloid. And it just so happens that the enzyme that breaks down beta amyloid is called insulin degrading enzyme. Let that sink in for a minute. When you're not controlling your blood sugar, and blood sugar levels are high, you're releasing more and more insulin. The body's re releasing an enzyme, insulin degrading enzyme, that breaks down that insulin. But that, in that enzyme is now so busy breaking down the blood insulin, if you will, it allows the beta amyloid, which it normally breaks down, to build up in the brain. So over long periods of time, beta amyloid starts building up. And then finally, as you guessed, you can get neuronal cell death, cognitive decline, and so on. And finally, blood sugar and uh, insulin dysregulation, how do they come together to contribute to Alzheimer's disease, cognition, neurological decline? Well, the insulin degrading enzyme that breaks down beta amyloid can get busy or distracted breaking down the other insulin. You can get free radicals and oxidative stress, stress products from uh, increased body fat and so on. You can get reduced cerebral blood flow. Again, you don't get the nutrients and the oxygen. You don't get rid of the waste products. You can get a buildup of beta amyloid. And you can get immune activation through the microglial cells in the brain through immune activation. So it's this composite, this big picture where all these different pieces come together to affect our core brain functioning, our cognition, our memory, uh, and so on. So this is why controlling blood sugar, which ultimately impacts insulin, is so important in healthy brain aging. They're now calling this whole picture the brain on fire. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take a look at some of the solutions.